to know who's coming into the country, where they're coming from, whether they're a terrorist or not a terrorist, whether they came from Syria or they came from Libya. He doesn't know and he doesn't care. All he knows is they're an automatic voter for the Democrat Party. If you people don't see the danger we're in, nobody will ever be able to help you. It's that simple. Let's go to some of the callers. Jito on WMAL in Washington, D.C. Go ahead. What's on your mind today? Dr. Savage, you asked a very important question. Your bombshell novel, Stop the Coming Civil War. Are we becoming cultural Marxists? And I would have to say, based on going to the Million Idiot March last Saturday, that it's a resounding yes. I was surrounded by communists, race baiters, just people who have no idea what's going on on planet Earth. I, I wouldn't even be surprised if they knew how to tie their shoes, yet they just regurgitate everything that's being said by the socialist Bernie Sanders, the socialist Pope Francis, the socialist Hillary Clinton, and I'm tired of it. And I can't stand it anymore, and I just want to say thank you for speaking up, because I need to hear your voice to keep going, sir. Well, that's a compliment, so obviously I'm thankful, and I will send you a copy of Government Zero, the next in the uh, sequence, the last in the sequence, by the way, uh, and it goes well beyond Stop the Coming Civil War. There's not a rehash at all in it, and it shows us the damage Obama and the leftists have done and what they intend to do, and I think in light of the Democrat convention, or the, excuse me, Democrat debate, so-called last night, you really need to have a copy of this book to show to a neighbor, a friend, or a loved one who is living in a dream world. I don't know whether they'll read it. I doubt it. But stay in the line, Gito. We'll send that out to you. Now, let's go to a little bit more uh, of... Oh, wait. Here's a couple of calls for Bernie. WABC Rich, go ahead, please. What's uh, your comment? Oh, my comment. I have a question for Bernie. Okay, Bernie. Last night during the debate... You said that you were for recreational marijuana. Now, I make more than $20,000 a year. How am I supposed to pay for that when 99.99.99% of my money is going to taxes? Oh, oh, you mean, okay, I got to answer as Bernie now. Well, look, under my new tax plan, marijuana will be provided for free by the government. It will be government farms growing the marijuana so people can enjoy the medicine of the marijuana. We'll be giving it out in lozenges and candies of different kinds down to the age of nine. Any other, any under nine I think is a little too dangerous at this time because 99% of the scientists agree that marijuana is safe for everyone up above the age of nine. Uh, the scientists we have found at NYU who are stoned out of their gourd most of the time have all determined that anyone from nine up can have sex with anybody and they can smoke marijuana with impunity because it's good for them. It is like a medication and therefore very much required by a sane and humane government which we're going to give out. So you ask a question for which I've given an answer in the sense that you don't have to worry about paying. We're going to take care of it. We're going to grow it in Indiana and give it away for nothing. Oh my gosh, Dr. Savage, you're amazing. You just proved another point why why these people that's running for office, office shouldn't even be there. I, I, I don't understand. <laughs> you know, I'll tell you, what's funny about Bernie and my attempts at imitating him, and they were better in the first hour. I get a little tired by hour three. My Bernie is better in hour one than hour two and better than the, the, the three, but is this years ago I used to do a doctor on Savage where people would get to ask a liberal, you know, get me to answer as a liberal would, and I would be, I'd go on in a voice, a falsetto voice of a doctor on Savage. Those of you in the audience who remember that, raise your hand. I've been around so long, I'm sure some of you do. But now I don't have to do doctor on Savage and stress my vocal cords. I, all I got to do is do a few changes in my gl glottal stops, go and make believe I'm the uncle I ran away from in New York the crazed uncle that nobody would want around during a Seder, who would spit on himself and spill knishes on the shoes, grab your lapel, poke you in the chest, and start screaming and not let you go about the wonders of communism. So it's very easy, frankly. Stay in a line of copy. <laughs> a copy <laughs> of Government Zero goes out. I hope that Bernie, I say go, Bernie, go. I want him to go all the way to the convention. I really need radio material. Look, Hillary, there's not much material. What can you say about it? We had eight years of her. There's nothing new to say. I mean, you're going to do a Bill Clinton imitation? I don't do it. It's not interesting, not funny. You're going to say the dress? Not funny. Cattle gate, this gate? Not funny. Emails dead already in the water, gone. No one's going to look into them because the FBI took them and made sure they were flushed. That's two. That's over with. Benghazi, no one knows what it is. They think it's a cream for like uh, arthritic pain. They think it's like in a tube. But you say Benghazi, they think you mean Ben Gay. They don't know what it is. So that's over with. So that's not an interesting thing, Hillary Clinton. The uh, My reference is too obtuse for the average. What I'm starting to think, <clears throat> when I look at Facebook, 
by what I post, I see what people respond to. A picture of Teddy got more than anything. And it's very interesting to see what people actually respond to. You could see why politicians become so boring. They do focus groups, and they know what the average idiot out there responds to. So they sit up there like a robot, and they repeat words that they know will get a response from an audience of n numbskulls. And that's all they talk about. 98% of scientists, you got to play the Bernie Sanders one on global warming. This is fantastic. I would say that if there is uh, an excess of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, it was caused by Bernie Sanders' family using too much seltzer and uh, not, not disposing of the bottles properly in Brooklyn. That's what probably did it was the escape of the carbon dioxide from the top of the bottle went into the atmosphere and probably caused the glaciers to melt a little bit and the, the, uh, the, uh, the bears, the polar bears, to get high on the carbon dioxide that flew up there, according to Al Sharpton. Let's uh, listen to the great scientific genius Bernie Sanders on, uh, on global warming. The scientific community is telling us if we do not address the global crisis of climate change, transform oh, our energy system away from fossil oh, fuel to sustainable energy, the, the planet idiot. that we're going to be leaving our kids and our grandchildren may well not be habitable. That is a major crisis. Oh, you moron, you. 98% of the sold-out whores with science credentials who receive government grants say a thing like that, you schmendrick, you. You know that it's all a lie, you phony, you. It's a way of stealing money and stealing people's energy from them. Now, we then go into guns, and uh, he did a whole thing on guns, gun control, and he comes from the people of the state of Vermont. Let's listen to Sanders now in clip eight, just because you need a good laugh. Listen. Let's begin, Anderson, by understanding uh, that Bernie Sanders has a D-minus voting record from the NRA. Let's answer. also understand that back in 1988, when I first ran for the United States Congress, way back then, I told mm -hmm. the gun owners of the state of Vermont, and I told the people of the state of Vermont, a state which has virtually no gun control, that I supported a ban on assault weapons. And over the years, I have strongly supported instant background checks, doing away with this terrible gun show loophole, and I think we've got to move aggressively at the federal level in dealing with the straw man purchases. How about the straw man candidates? Can we deal with that? Is it possible for we in America to move strongly? to get rid of the straw man candidates like Bernie Sanders, who's up there only to make Hillary Clinton look less insane? What do you think of that? Now, the best one, again, is, is Webb, former Navy secretary, Marine, combat veteran, hero, highly decorated, wonderful man. Listen to his straight answer compared to that lunatic from Brooklyn. Listen to clip number 10. Look, I don't... There are two fundamental issues that are involved in this discussion, and we need to pay respect to both of them. The first is the issue of who should be kept from having guns and using firearms. And we have done not a good job on that. A lot of them are criminals, and a lot of the people are getting killed are members of gangs inside our urban areas, and a lot of them are mentally incapacitated. In the shooting in, uh, in Virginia, Tech, uh, in 07, uh, this individual had have received uh, medical care for mental illness from three different professionals who were not allowed to share the information. A hundred percent right. I have said the same thing. Mentally unstable, mentally ill people should not have guns. And I stand by that. I said the same thing and I agree with him. And then he goes on to clip number 11 on guns. Let's see what you think about that one. So we do need background checks. We need to keep the people who should not have guns away from them. But we have to respect the tradition in this country of people who want to defend themselves and their family from violence. Senator. There are high, no, may I, people are going back and forth here for 10 minutes here. You know, there are people at high levels in this government who have bodyguards 24 hours a day, seven days a week. The average American does not have that and deserves the right to be able to protect their family. I think that's a very clear answer. I wouldn't agree with everything he just said about background checks, although I certainly believe that there needs to be some kind of background check on some people. Let's put it to you that way. And I would start very clearly in the gang-ridden neighborhoods. I'd go a little further than that, but I don't want to go into that right now. You want to start with gun control? Start getting gun control uh, by controlling the guns in the hands of the illegal aliens and the gangs that are making certain cities uninhabitable. Let, let's start with that. Let's start with the obvious. 
not with the people who are locking themselves up at night and putting their alarms on and making sure that their shotgun is loaded to keep the bad people out from harming them and their family. Let, let's be a little clear here and go after those who we really fear, not those who are trying to protect themselves. But you haven't heard one person say that, have you? Oh, my goodness, look at the time. It is 47 minutes after the hour. Back in a minute. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Hey, our Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust for wealth insurance, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. Hot Talk 560 KSO. Real breaking news on the Savage Nation as the third hour comes to a conclusion. There is a bomb that was just thrown into the news world. Headline Fox News Cuba jumps in. A top Cuban general and Cuban soldiers are in Syria aiding Assad and Russia, advising Assad soldiers, preparing to man Russian made tanks to aid Damascus in fighting American proxy forces in Syria. Now think about what this does to the doofus in the White House. Here the doofus reached out to Iran, gave them a nuclear weapon. Here doofus went to Cuba, shook the hands of the Cuban dictators, the Castro brothers, and he got nothing in return. And now Cuba turns around and stabs him in the back and says, and sends Cuban troops to Syria to fight alongside Russia to kill our factotum forces. How is that for a commander in chief? How is that for a psycho in the White House? Any other nation would hold a me emergency, an emergency hearing, emergency hearing, an emergency resolution. They would throw the man out of office for having bungled such a thing like this. If this happened in, in England because of the parliamentary system, they would call for elections and they would dismiss this man as the incompetent nut that he is. But we're stuck with him. And he goes on and on. Booming voice. Talk loudly. Carry a limp stick. Cuba jumps in. Top general soldiers in Syria to aid Assad in Russia. And this is the same Cuba that Obama reached out to not too long ago. And a general is there, a top general, General, general Leopoldo Sintrafrias, head of Cuba's armed forces, was in Syria, according to info received by the University of Miami Center for Cuban and Cuban American Studies. And on Wednesday, U.S. official confirmed to Fox News that Cuban paramilitary and special forces units are on the ground in Syria, citing evidence from intelligence reports. Can you believe this? Cuban troops may have been training in Russia and may have arrived in Syria on Russian planes. Institute for Cuban and Cuban American Studies says it would indicate that General Raul Castro is more interested in supporting his allies, Russia and Syria, than in continuing to normalize relations with the United States of America. Now, you have to absorb this to understand what this means with regard to Barack Obama's, uh, shall I say, incompetence? Earlier this year, your president removed Cuba from the list of state sponsors of terrorism. He set out to normalize relations between Cuba and the U.S. Did you know that? He threw away decades of embargoes against Cuba. And he said there are those who want to turn back the clock and double down on a policy of isolation. But it's long past time for us to realize that this approach doesn't work. It hasn't worked for 50 years. Ladies and gentlemen, Barack Obama's appeasement policies are very dangerous for your survival. He is appeasing the radical Muslims who are killing Christians and flooding into America with his help. And now he's appeasing the Cubans who are supplying troops to Russia to kill our so-called good rebels.